Okay. Hi, guys. Today I'm joined with John Theobald and Rick Trask, Trask from PDM Technology, and we're going to drill down a little bit on the product Blue Star. So, all right, let's start off. Okay, one of you guys, give me a little bit of a history. Who's Blue Star? Where did you come from? You know, what's what's the origin story? Rick, you've been on board longer than I have, so I'll yeah. let you give the 18-year thing, yeah. and I'll maybe fill in some blanks. Yeah, so the company started in Denmark about 20 years ago. The product came out 18 years ago called Blue Star. It's a PDM technology is the company official name, but it's mostly known by Blue Star and has expanded throughout Europe, North America for the last 15 years. And then it's in South America, Australia, Asia Pac. So it's used by companies globally. We have thousands of engineers, hundreds of engineers that use the system in companies and they use them for multiple locations. So we've been living everywhere for the last 20 years. Been part of the Dynamics platform or formerly known as Exapta that whole time. So we were been part of way back in the three version three and four, oh nine, twelve. We've been part of this platform for a long time. You know, I, I can remember the name. I started working with Exapta, Dam Guard Exapta many mm -hmm. years ago, and I can remember the name from way back when. So yeah, been around a long time. Yeah. Okay, I have got some questions for you guys. So in the very first one is something that I think you can help clear up for a number of organizations I talk to anyway, and yeah. that is what is Blue Star? It's a PLM, PDM. Talk to me about what those mean, what the differences <laughs> are. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. Give me some definitions here, guys. Sure. So actually, it's a combination. The benefit of Blue Star is it's for to use a term that's a missing link between engineering and manufacturing. So uh, a PDM is product data management. And when people, typically when we talk to people, and I've been in PLM for 20 years now, Rick came from an organization that used D365 and, and Blue Star. So he's been on the user end of this. But typically when I've asked hundreds of companies, what do they use for appeal? And they say, first of all, they say, oh, we have appeal. And really all they have is a PDM. So if you're looking at a wagon wheel with PLM and ERP in the hub, and you've got a, the spokes, typically when they say PDM or PLM, they mean engineering one wheel of the spoke. So the benefit of Blue Star is to fill in those other spokes. So we're merging CAD, PLM, and ERP all combined together in a collaborative solution. So what's that going to do? It's going to go from your ideation, I'm thinking about making something, out through engineering, R&D, quality, manufacturing, and then it goes out to market, and then it's supported in the aftermarket sale through quality and warranty and field service and stuff like that. So the benefits is that you are getting uh, Blue Star embedded, and there's a difference between embedded and integrated, and we can talk about that, within D365. And now this is going to connect all the users from sales, engineering, purchasing, manufacturing, and service in a single base. So back to the definition, PDM, product data management. Yep. PLM, product lifecycle management. Correct. So what's the difference between product data management and product lifecycle management then? So product data management basically is just working as a repository for the engineers to work in their CAD and have an area to store their documents and revisions and the work they do in engineering. PDM kind of stops short of those other spokes in the wagon. So PLM picks that product up and pushes it through the rest of the supply chain, really? Correct. Rick, do you have anything to add to, that you want? Yeah, it manages the product information management dynamics. So all of that information that's collected in the product data is now extended right into product information management because PLM is a module in Dynamics. It's fully embedded, so you have access to all that information data across the, the whole structure. So it's just not the products. You can also get the documents, 
other types of change management, specification, attributes. There's a whole bunch of different things in addition to that that we offer. So there's claims, warranty processes that go along with your quality management for non-conformance, corrective action, et cetera. So all those things are available. So it's a complete change cycle. So no matter where you are in the engineering, sales order, quality order, doesn't matter, you can drive a change. So, so I really like what John said about the, the gap. It closes that gap yeah, between engineering yeah. and manufacturing. So yes. give me a little bit of a picture of, you walk into a company, they've got their engineering department doing drawings over there, they're using their CAD software. You've got a manufacturing system based on dynamics. Tell me what you identify as the, what, what makes you walk into that company and go, they need us, they really need us. What are they saying? What are the problems you guys are thinking that you're going to solve for that particular company? Some of the questions we ask them are, how, what are you using for quality? How do you do your quality? How do you manage your documents? So things that show a lack of collaboration, things that show silos throughout the organization. Maybe they have multi-plant, multi-country environments that they are not collaborative in. So mm -hmm. those would all be key things. And of course, they use the awesome and ever-knowing <laughs> platform of Excel to do everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So lots of Excel spreadsheets. So one of the things that I come across with a lot of my clients is the idea that, and you mentioned it just then, right? Is engineering change management. And I've got a lot of clients who have production orders on the shop floor and changes come in, right? The client changes their mind. They want a decision, mm -hmm. they've decided something different. So how does this support that sort of engineering change management where the engineers are knowing that there's a change and something's already in motion on that shop floor? How, do, how does it, how does the Blue Star solution sort of help with that? So from the production side, they would create a corrective action. They, they have a problem. If there's a change that needs to come from that, then they would generate then a, an engineering change order request. Notification would come out, they process whatever needs to happen to fix the problem, correct it. So there's all kinds of different dispositions that that change is gonna process through. All that's tracked through, the, through a form and workflow process in the system. So mm -hmm. there's notifications, people are assigned tasks, mm -hmm. they know what they need to do. And then that is all processed through in the system to the change and released. Within the change management, we have what we call analysis. We can analyze now that change impact, not only knowing the impact of the production orders, but sales orders, inventory. We can wait within the system. It's not just a report that tells you what's wrong. It actually generates the listing of things, and then you can actually go right to those orders and inventory information and figure out what you need to do. If you need to do a stop ship, you need to do inventory hold, whatever you need to do. Uh, to control that change until it processes through. Then it's going to release that change, becomes an either we have all revision and version. So you have a new revision that revs through. Now you can see that new revision process through the system. We call it as built, and you can actually see the as built inventory throughout the, all the transactions. And we have full traceability and uh, history of everything because we need to meet FDA and ITAR requirements. So customers need to have that information. So we have customers from everything, medical device to nuclear to military. So we have a lot of different requirements, a lot of ITAR things with customers that we work with. So that's out of the box. So everybody gets that and people right. actually love that. So practic know the changes are. Yep. practically speaking, customer rings up, engineers find out that they want to change this particular component on a particular you know, piece of equipment, mm -hmm. the production order is released, they haven't got to that route, point in the route where that yeah. thing changes happen. Practically speaking, what, what what's the process? What happens? At some points you create a quality order, do an inspection, and then you can generate the same stuff right from the quality order. You can right. do your change and all your process right from there. Right, and that, pushes actions, that, whatever. that pushes that through to the shop floor. So someone yep. out there on the manufacturing floor goes, ha, huh, yep. you know, I'm supposed to put this part in, and in fact, I've got a change order. I can't. I have to stop. Yep. 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 And then all the, yeah, all the documents and everything, specifications, everything is there available, too, on the production line. 
So uh, everything is available and released with the item. Yeah, in the old days in manufacturing, it used to be that pieces of paper followed whatever <laughs> they were making throughout yeah. the, the plant floor. With modernization, re onshoring of manufacturing within the U.S., <laughs> manufacturers are seeing, hey, I've got to move quicker. I've got to do uh, new product introduction faster. I've got to you know, worry about scrap. I've got to get, you know, product out to market quicker. Piece of paper is now going electronic so that if you're out on the plant floor, you can literally open up a, a document and explode it so they can see all the parts of the product they're manufacturing, how those are going to go. And <clears throat> are there any alternatives that they can use for that a red top, green top, a different yeah. suppliers if they're short? from one supplier, can they substitute? Yeah, the yeah. supplier can't deliver. Oh, it's stuck in the, it's stuck <laughs> in the harbor and um, outside yeah. LA, right? Yeah. I'm moving a little bit backwards. I'm gonna start at the integration point. So I understand that one of the benefits is that it, Blue Star helps the CAD system communicate with the ERP. Do you wanna give me just a little rundown of what CAD systems integration are available? I'd say it probably, be easier to tell you what isn't available. I'd say that if it's a CAD system out there, whether it's your tried and true like SolidWorks or your Creo or Altium or we integrate, we've got uh, them all, and it's uh, and that's just as it's just a tight of embedded with those as it is with uh, D3 as a solution. So it's actually embedded as a module. So you're working in D365. It, one of the biggest complaints I had from engineers in the past was they had to click in and out of different systems and that wow. data didn't follow mm -hmm. along and now it does. So Rick, you can add to that as well. Yeah, the other advantages that we have is we can support multiple CAD systems together in one PLM solution. Ah. So we can have ECAD, MCAD. We have a lot of stuff where we have the MCAD and ECAD together. So what we have is a what we call a multi check in. You can actually check in multiple CAD solutions into one bill of material structure. So you can have your electrical components along with your mechanical designs and whatever it may be included in. The other part of that is it's, it can be intermixed. We have a lot of companies do acquisitions. So they're bringing in, they're using maybe Creo or SolidWorks and they have Altium and then they maybe bring in Solid Edge and maybe they bring in Inventor, or Autodesk. So it doesn't, we manage all those structures, everything's revision control, it's all in a vault. We get vaults live in multiple regions throughout the world, it can be accessed anyway, and they can all be synced. And we do that either on-prem or in the cloud through Azure. And I think awesome. another big thing is all these models in manufacturing, you're talking about production. We have a viewer tool we call BlueView. You can, don't have to have CAD, you can be on the production floor and you can disassemble that item look at any isometric view, top, bottom, side, whatever you want, explode out the parts from it in different segments, and you can see how things go, are put together in the 3D model. You can rotate it around, you can do whatever you want. So you don't have to sit there and generate documents and information from the CAD model. You don't have to print out and create all the assembly instructions. You have customers that use that viewer to actually generate assembly instructions for customers. Right even with the manufacturing floor. So there's those additional aspects of the tool as, as well that's used quite a bit in production manufacturing. So it extends not just the engineers all the way over. The other part on the CAD is from the integration is like John was mentioning, you wanna know what's on hand inventory. You wanna know what's the transactions. We have that all built into our CAD structure. As part ah, of so the engineers can see how much. Ah. Yep, yeah, they can be on an assembly and say, what do you got for on in inventory? Literally, they click a button, takes them right to the on inventory, the item in dynamics. Yeah, you can you know, no costed bombs, things like that. So there's a lot of really nice embedded pieces just with a CAD. So yeah. our whole idea is to bring that engineer who lives independently and is all fine in his PDM world to the EP ERP world in operations. Yeah. And then when they start to see all the information, they can collaborate. That's when the excitement comes in. Cause even wow. the engineers start getting, being like, wow, I can, I have so much power now. 
<laughs> see what's going on. That would be scary. For yeah. Some. Looking now, it's working through to the deployment of, of the application. I have a question that often comes up, and that a manufacturer who wants to, who's very interested in this technology. We've got a lot of clients who go, let's get the ERP in new, let's get that up and running first, and then let's, and I'm sure this happens all the time. So I want to give you the opportunity to tell us why it's of value to actually bring in this part of the business process as part of the initial implementation of the product of, yeah. of Dynamics. And, and what are the benefits of doing it from ground up? Yeah, and I've lived that in myself. I've implemented ERPs, run IT departments. So I've done it both ways, before right. and after. Uh, a lot of times it comes after the fact, the company realizes they want to expand. That's normal, we do, do a lot of those. We do have companies now, new into D365, that realize the benefit. We can run PLM on Dynamics with nothing else running. We can run it independently. The beauty of it is you can manage all your CAD structure, bill and materials and items, and have your item master all ready to go. So you can start utilizing that item master in your current system. And then mm. once D365 is ready in the operational Six months, side, 12 months. Go. yep. And we have a full release capability, so we can do a mass release of all the items in their current structure, and you're off and running. So those are, and so from a go live perspective, the amount of pressure comes way off because how much is your item master still in flux when you go live? How many things are you still trying to figure out at go live? And if yeah, that's I'm, off I'm your plate, I'm right now that I'm thinking that would be listening to this going. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And once you live it, and I have a couple of customers I'm working with right now are doing that months ahead of time right. and realizing the value. Because now you don't have to worry that your items are ready. You don't have to worry that your product is, is ready for. And when you go live and then the go live production was running right away because all the items are there. All your data is there. Sales orders are ready to process once you processed over your open orders and your open inventory and open procurement and shipping. So within two, three days, everybody is fully operational. So you don't have that lag in time. You still have to bring over your open orders and procurement stuff through your planning, but it's much faster and much more efficient because you're not running around with more fires. Sorry, historically, John. Just let me add to that, Deb. Historically, PLM, PLMs have been as much as an ERP system and just as complex to implement as an ERP mm -hmm. system. Right. And Blue Star is different in that uh, we are typically a quarter of the cost and a quarter of the time to implement. So that removes that. Usually it's all, I don't have the extra admin people or resources at my company to devote to two different projects going live at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that, that is my question. So from a resource perspective, if a company's thinking about doing this like upfront and getting their PLM up and running, the resources would be largely the engineering group. Was Is that really, or supply chain people? Tell mm -hmm. me what a project looks like that is, that is just getting running with the PLM. So the methodology, we have a specific methodology uh, that we follow t for implementation and that'll and our project plan will break out what is Blue Star's responsibility and what is right. the client's responsibility and even if we are working with a Microsoft partner what is the partner's responsibility sure. to make sure that that handshake is in, as they are doing an ERP implementation we our thoughts are included with them. Rick, I'll let you answer into a little bit deeper on the implementation as you do them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I do implementations as well, and and have implemented on both sides. We have a a process we follow for education. So we have a portal with a full description of everything, walk by step by step video. We do training today. It's you know a little bit different with the video, but we do in session hands-on training to help people learn the system and the processes. And we have a very defined set of things that we go through in the CAD structures, your document management, and all your setup of the PLM. And then we have designed over the years to integrate with our tool set, and we call our uploads tools, 
from about any ERP or type of system or PLM system you have today. Very extensive capability to do mass uh, updates and processes. So we help through all those things to get you up and running. Our goal is for you to be 100% efficient. We take away the IT work from integrations, managing that whole P PLM to ERP because mm -hmm. you don't need to do that anymore because it's fully embedded. I've lived that life. I've run other PDM solutions. Mm -hmm. So I have hands-on experience with that. And there's a lot of people out there that I know today that deal with that who would love to get rid of that. You know. So we've talked about implementation and just recognizing that we could probably talk about this all day. I'm mm -hmm. going to go to the end of that and talk about what happens after and, and, and the customer's up and running. A little interested to know, Microsoft are releasing new versions of Dynamics every every six months now. What 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 implications does that have on an installation of Blue Star? What did Blue Star do to make sure that their soft, your software is yeah. up and able to be be operated with the updates that Microsoft sent? Tell us a little bit about handling that up, upgrade cycle. Yeah, yeah. So we work with Microsoft as a direct partner and have for many years, even prior to Microsoft. And we do all of the integration work, the setups, um, coding development, all through the LCS package. So 100% deployable, it's 100% extensible. We actually designed our product extensible prior to Dynamics 365. So mm -hmm. it was a very easy step for us to go into Dynamics. So we're probably at the first ISV to be extensible. Uh, so we keep track of all that. We deploy that to all of our customers. It's all managed. We're usually not very far behind, if at all, in the Microsoft deployments. So we're usually six months ahead when they do the initial release. So, so you have got a copy of the, the preview version. You're yeah. testing and managing yeah. that. So it's ready for prime time mm -hmm. when the client's ready. Good, good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we're the same thing with the the CAD systems as well. Yep. Yeah, ah, of course, because you've got you're talking to the both. You've got both yep. handshakes yep. on both sides. Yep. All right, so just to conclude, I'm interested to know technology's changing. We talk about the factory of the future, industry 4.0. What are the changes coming down the line with for Blue Star, and what's the next technologies that you're thinking about in terms of? handling the the PL product lifecycle management processes for clients. What are you seeing a little bit further out into the in the future there? Sure. So let me touch back on one thing if I can before so I don't forget on it. When we talked about some of the benefits and some of the acquisitions that companies are making this in this day and age. We do have companies that are, but they do have some subsidiaries or buying some companies that aren't using D365. So that is not a problem for us. We can run on a team's license only. So as Rick said, standalone, they don't have to face the challenge of ripping out a an older ERP or a different yeah. ERP to have them collaborate within uh, their company's enterprise, global enterprise structure. Right, so, so just, that's that sort of flexibility and agility, being able to keep up with companies as they make those business decisions. Yeah, yeah. so that's yeah. one of the things that we realized moving forward. IoT, Industry 4.0, mobility, those are all the things that we are, that we are looking at. We're looking at the possibility of maybe other ERPs or something like Business Central. We're always thinking about how could we help Microsoft's clients form a tighter relationship or help some of those smaller tiered suppliers or manufacturers. PLM as a whole is evolving just as ERP and Microsoft going mm -hmm. to a smart world and going digital and having more of a, a remote access or different things that that matter to them, such as the warranty field service. So these are all things that we're looking at evolving to or are, are moving our the PLM development to. Yeah. Sure, because I can imagine in my experiences with manufacturers is they're now talking about things that manufacturers typically never talked about, like <laughs> the world of e-commerce, for example, when yeah. they're a business to business and all of a sudden their expectation is to do e-commerce. You're right, the field service aspect. OEMs are starting to think maybe I need to have that that relationship with the end user. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'm going to take over, go, go back and take my service side back from, let's say, a distribution channel. So mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So th obviously with Blue Star, you're thinking that sort of that intel that's created around the design of an as-built product is mm -hmm. something that's going to be needed across the enterprise, right? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, we also, yeah, we also do projects, stage gate management, workflow workflows integrated with the project accounting. So if you want to yeah. do that, we have Power BI. So what people love about our workflow and change management, you have a director VP wants to know what's going on in his organization, his workflows, where are things at. They have full visualization to all this data. So it's right. all accessible to them. We find companies now are putting stuff into PLM because we can store any type of data and structure attributes. So we're putting stuff in for e-commerce systems, for labeling systems, whatever, because now they can manage it. It's all released, controlled, and approved through a workflow process. It's not just ad hoc in a side system in the database. <laughs> so we have customers that you know we feed to many different downstream commerce. Systems. Another one is root cause analysis. So people want to find out, <clears throat> excuse me, if they've got issues going on with a product uh, that they've sold. Uh, a different part and maybe it's reoccurring. They want to be able to drill down and figure out is the part failing because it's being overstressed by the wrong, we're using the wrong metal or is it a, this is can't run in a cold environment in a northern area versus a hot environment, wow. say in uh, United Arab Emirates or down south. Is the paint not sticking because it's the paint? or how it's being applied, or the metals not being prepped. So those are all things that companies are looking for in the future now. And as Rick mentioned on the BI, they want to have the executives go in and see a red light, green light, yellow light, so they can you know, <coughs> deal with things proactively before they become an issue. We all know about the airbag scenario. And I guarantee if they could do things over again, there'd be root cause analysis and quality and, and sure. other things. And that's sort of like the closed loop, right? It's the ability mm -hmm. for everything from the engineering to start to go through out into the field and back and feedback to engineering so they can make better design decisions. So mm -hmm. yeah, that makes all the sense in the world. Hey guys, I think um, we've probably hit about the time that we've allotted yeah. for our chat today. So. Awesome. just want to take some time here at the end to say thank you very much. I know that at Sikich we work with you a lot. We've got a lot of engineering clients with the engineering department and absolute pleasure to have you both with me today. So thank you very much.